isolating limbs to climb off of or to move your own system. You can do so many different things with that. Uh, here's a, another way to canopy anchor the tree with a pulley, and that's just to aid in retrieval because a lot of times, you know, rope on rope, rope on limb stuff, when you're pulling that thing, when you're pulling that rope out, it can be quite strenuous. Um, and sometimes uh, not successful. So uh, there's ways you can aid that by adding equipment, adding stuff. And uh, I won't really go into that too much because I'm a carabiner guy. <laughs> and that's basically all I use, um, or sometimes a quickie, not a quickie. Uh, but uh, there's so many different options is what I'm looking at uh, versus your traditional climbing system. Uh, not just for working, but also for you know tying into the tree and uh, potentially lowering yourself or having somebody lower you out of the tree if you're in trouble. Um, many many options here, and lots of extra gear. All right, uh, I'm not going to go there quite yet. So uh, you got the canopy anchor. How do you get that into the tree? Uh, I don't have a thermal, but it's the the, the uh, protocol starts out the same way. You know, you get your rope all over a branch, and uh, you pull your rope up over that branch. You know, and if it's isolated, uh, it's a good thing. If it's not, not a problem. We'll get there. Uh, but anyway, then you take your carabiner or your uh, notch quickie or whatever hardware you're using to help with your anchor point, and then you just cinch it up. That's how you do it. It doesn't matter if the tree is 30 feet tall or 60 feet tall or 100 feet tall or if you're in the redwood, it could be 250 feet tall. Um, but this is exactly the same every time. Um, so this would be something that's not retrievable because if it's 60 feet in the air, I can't get to it. So there's things we do to work around that with canopy anchors. And one of those is I can introduce midline knot into my climbing rope. Now you got your stationary rope that you can climb on, plus uh, the other end that you can use to retrieve it. So this is would be the the simplest form of the canopy anchor. This is where you can add extra stopper knots. You can add hardware into the tree. The common thing is to add an extra an extra anchor down lower just to kind of make sure that this fails, you know, this one is gonna cinch back up and catch it again. Um, but there's there's options for using it and options for uh, increasing your level of safety uh, with these systems. <clears throat> um, so who here already Climbs on stationary rope systems. One, two, three, four. About half of the people in here, which is not very many. And that's pretty normal to see because this kind of thing is is totally <laughs> alien. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I'm all about that legs itch. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, uh, you know, you're climbing on this side and you're not, you're not, uh, running ropes over branches or through equipment. It's, it's literally just sitting there, not hurting the tree at all, and you're just going up and down the rope, which is the benefit. Um, so why is it alien? Is it alien because you can't pull yourself up with the other end? No, it's not well known. It's not mainstream. Not a lot of people know about it or use it because 
Um, especially, you know, in this area, the trees aren't really that large. So hip thrusting up 30 feet, not, not a huge deal, unless you're 33 like me. Um, <laughs> Oh, right, yeah, so, uh, right, um, and I kind of skipped over that. When you're setting this up, uh, to do this type of canopy anchor, you, you still also have to have an isolated branch. Um, so that's one of the challenges, for sure. Yes, from the ground. Uh, very difficult to do. But there's ways around it, too. And that way around it is uh, anchoring somewhere else in the, in the, it could be at the base of a tree, another tree, it could be in the canopy somewhere. Um, but it's not this straight line from your anchor point to your, your climbing device and your saddle. It's some other, there's a redirect involved. And so um, instead of anchoring to the tree, you could also Or somewhere else. Uh, if you can't isolate a branch, or um, if you're just, you know, if you don't have that that need to set something up that's, uh, you know, very permanent, and you just need to get a rope in the tree and get up the tree. You can do this kind of thing, which is just we refer to it as a basal anchor, but it's just still a canopy anchor, right? I mean, where does the canopy start in this tree? Who knows? It could be around the, the stem too. But already you can see that uh, much different than your traditional moving rope systems. Um, many options here. And there are differences with anchoring in the tree versus anchoring somewhere else. And I'm going to definitely get to that. Uh, and so the, the protocol for a base anchor on a stationary rope system is the same. You throw your rope over the tree, you capture a couple branch unions, pull the rope through and then uh, you know, attach your devices and get going. And uh, you still have to have that stitching anchor. That's a, that's a priority. Um, but there's also variations on this too when you have it within reach from the ground. So uh, one of those is this system can be converted to a lowerable system like you would with rigging in a tree. Um, in fact, I think at the next slide here, says something about that. Here I just have a, a quarter wrap showing uh, something that is lowerable, but it, in reality it would be like a friction hitch and uh, some other thing attached to the tree. So just in case the climber becomes incapacitated, uh, the ground crew and ground workers can lower the climber out of the tree uh, if they don't you know, have other stuff attached, uh, which they should, but you know, if they don't, then you're, you get left, you can just kind of let them down which is uh, huge, but you know, all that extra stuff. Uh, typically, we don't set that up on every job, but um, if we were to work near something like an electrical conductor or uh, a tree with a lot of uh, you know, decay pockets that there's a good chance something might happen that we can't foresee, we might consider using a stationary rope system and making it lowerable just in case. You never know. Um, but we, you don't have that option with the traditional moving rope system. Uh, you always have to go rescue the climber, you know, person on person. But this way, you can do it remotely if it, you know, things work out, or just simply, you know, unclipping the lanyard and then the somebody from the ground can, can do that work for you to do that rescue. <coughs> um, here's a a photo of uh, you can kind of see this rope. coming down from here, somewhere near the base of this tree. It's not a terribly large tree, but um, all I'm doing is working on this particular portion of the canopy. So I don't need to climb up the tree, set my tying point, and then rappel down and, and, and do what I need to do. All I did was toss this rope over a branch, um, anchor it to the base of the tree, and then I just ascend the tree, and I'm able to do the work here, which is one of the main benefits of stationary rope systems is they can be awfully quick to set up, um, or um, efficient, is what I should say, because uh, you're not doing all that extra work to install your climate system. You're just you're, you're doing it remotely from the ground, and then you can, you can get on uh, doing.
doing what you, what you need to do. And because um, it's so easy to install these ropes, uh, you can do, you, or I, I feel more comfortable myself about doing more things with uh, my climbing systems. And one of those is you can add ropes. So, um, you know, I'm limited to one rope um, a lot of times, but if I put two ropes in the tree, now all of a sudden, you know, I have different ways to access the canopy, different ways to gain work positioning. Um, and it's really easy to do from the ground. I don't have to go up the tree, climb around, and do all that stuff to set things up. I can just do it right from the ground, just as easy as it would uh, to do anything, really. Uh, shoot a throw ball in the air, capture a limb, and saw your rope and get going. Uh, also, um, for uh, modern day tree climbing, one of the, the buzz things we do is uh, we set up emergency access lines just in case we need to have somebody, you know, perform a rescue or uh, help out in the tree. Um, you need to have, you know, that extra rope set up just in case and just having a stationary rope hanging in the tree is a good way to do that. Uh, so you, in case you do need to have somebody else send the tree, everything's ready to go and you don't have to have that person, you know, go through their whole ritual of setting the throw line and isolating a branch and then hip thrusting up 60 feet to do all that. You can just have one ready to go. That's a requirement in England now. Yeah. Those guys are really in culture shock because before they go up in the tree, they have to put a second rope up there. Absolutely. And it's coming here too. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, even just two points of time is a relatively new thing, I hear. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, just ways to make your life easier and uh, ways, to, ways to make, um, the word I'm looking for is uh, com compliance. It's a way to comply easier too because uh, you, you can do these things with relatively little effort. And uh, it, it works just as good as, as your traditional moving rope system and sometimes better. Um, also, you know, when you have those two ropes in the tree or multiple, you can have three if you want, uh, you can switch between them. You know, it's easy to install and all you do is you unclip your device from one and clip it over to the next one. Then you can gain access to different parts of the canopy with ease. You can set up all this stuff beforehand. Uh, it can be really a, 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 a real asset to your toolbox to be able to do this stuff. All right. Uh, but you don't always have to climb on stationary rope systems with, with this device, with these devices either. You can do your traditional moving rope systems and just use the stationary rope system to, uh, to you know, uh, support your moving rope system. Uh, in this picture here, it's actually, you see this little, uh, this little line coming down. Um, this is actually for the rigging. He's not actually climbing on this. He's rigging off of this. Uh, usually I refer to this as a, like a skyline or something, um, just because it's, it's up in the air. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can also climb on something like this too. So our stationary rope component is going to be this one uh, going, up, going overhead and then your moving rope system would be attached to that somewhere. So it's one option, one variation of that stationary rope system uh, just to help out with the situation at hand. In this case, he's on something that's super unstable. So he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be climbing and rigging off of this, off of this uh, spar. So he elected to use uh, two other trees to rig from and support his rigging with this skyline, which is a stationary rope system. And then you just have your your rigging rope here, so it's you know it's not just for climbing either, and uh, you actually work with stationary ropes more often than you, than you think, and you probably understand those forces as a tree climber a lot, a lot better than you already think you do, uh, just from rigging. Um, so uh, like you know, just as you set up these climbing systems from the ground, you can also do that with your rigging. So you can uh, often rig remotely, you know, using throw balls and pole saws and stuff, without actually having to get onto the work to do your work you can do all that stuff from far where you're making your cut from a safer part of the tree uh, from the ground whatever you need to do for that situation and uh why don't i just why don't i just demonstrate that real quick got time.
So let's say uh, I don't really care for climbing on stationary ropes. I'm new at it. I'm not really comfortable with it. But I still want to be involved. <laughs> so I'd set up my anchor point. And then... Uh, <clears throat> All you gotta do is attach your uh, moving rope system with a cambium saver or a pulley or some other device. That's the wrong side. You can still climb on the stationary rope system, but do your work with the moving rope system and whichever flavor you like the best. So this is, uh, you know, you got this, but you're also on that stationary rope. Um, when I was first learning how to do this, that's what I did is I wasn't really comfortable with the whole uh, ascending the stationary rope and working on it. So I would just install the rope, pull my system up and climb off of, you know, the hitch climber pulley or something. And uh, it, it really works good because you don't have to climb the tree and install all this stuff. Uh, you know, before you're working, you just do it from the ground and then you just get to it, right? You start on a pulley or something low friction from the ground, ready to go without having to isolate limbs or try setting up a, a cambium saver from the ground, which is ridiculous, <laughs> but we do it anyway. Um, but yeah, just, it, it's like a, it's a hybrid system. It's got components of stationary ropes and moving ropes. And uh, it's just one of those dimensions that you can add to your toolbox just to make the whole process a little bit easier on yourself. And it's not taken advantage of enough yet. It's starting to. Um, I think the modern stationary rope systems have been around for almost 15 years now or so. And, uh, and I see it around much more often, but I mean, the more we use it, the more we want to use this stuff because it's so easy to do and uh, typically easier on your body too, which I'll, which I'll touch on. All right, here's another variation on that stationary rope system. So uh, this is the fixed, the fixed anchor on that stationary rope um, with your moving rope system attached to that anchor point on your rope. So you got two anchor points. You got one canopy anchor here, and you got one on the rope. Uh, so it's just a little bit more complex, but it's the same ease of setting up. Setting up. Um, but we can also make this thing move up and down too. So you can have a floating anchor on your stationary rope system. Um, and here it's just uh, like a you know an English press stick with with some you know whatever rope you want to use and then your climbing system, your moving rope system is attached to that. Uh, so there's benefits here too, um, and you get the same benefits that you would with just climbing off of a stationary rope, and that is you can redirect this line. So everything I've shown right now is just straight from the anchor point <coughs> to you, um, but you don't have to do that. You can also like the basal anchor, but um, it was a canopy anchor, and all we did was we redirected this this rope around another branch um, to gain access to a different part of the canopy or whatever we need to do. Um, maybe a more appropriate branch uh, is what we wanted to, to capture, that's what we wanted to accomplish. <clears throat> but uh, with that floating anchor, you can move your moving rope system along your stationary rope you can do these redirects, but you also get your same usability that you would with your favorite moving rope system. All right, 
Uh, I kind of hinted at uh, at this um, when you're using your moving rope system, uh, you know, and you need to advance your time point or change time points. Uh, what you do normally is you just unclip the anchor from yourself and you know flip it over another branch and then you continue on. But it's kind of hard to do that way when you have a stationary rope. But uh, you can still do it. And one of that way, one of those ways is to just keep your anchor point and put your climbing end over another branch union. You can remove your anchor point and just move it manually. We do it all the time. Um, and then all, all you're doing really is, uh, you know, you're changing the forces involved in the tree and uh, your purchase on, you know, wherever you're trying to get work position from. Um, but you don't have to unclip anything if you don't want to. You don't have to do that. You just move your rope through branch unions or through hardware in a tree, like a sling and a carabiner or something. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't have to always unclip and flip your rope around something. You can just go through unions and capture those, and you'll be, you know, that's just, you'll be totally fine. Um, so with the basal anchor, you obviously can't reach your anchor point if you're on the base of a tree. So you would be using that flipping method anyway to advance yourself. All right, so if I, if I was removing this tree and I had to cut that down, I would just take my rope out of that, put it through the union, and continue on. Um, but if I'm that close, I would just probably convert over to can't be here. <laughs> but uh, you can still do it on a basal anchor. Um, the only reason why you would keep this basal anchor uh, is what I said before with having a lowerable system. Sometimes you want to maintain that for safety reasons. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it's a very long time between setting up lower rule systems, but there's always that opportunity. You can, you can have that for uh, which you don't have that with uh, your traditional moving rope system. All right. Okay. We're all familiar with the moving rope system. Um, you know, you, you have your, your branch isolated in the tree. And the force you're putting on that union is going to be what you weigh. I happen to weigh just about one kilonewton, or I mean, I exert one kilonewton of force on the ground. And it happens to be that way with uh, a canopy anchor as well, if you're just anchored to the tree or to a branch union. what I have in this first little uh, figure right here. But when you are anchored somewhere else in the tree, you have this force multiplication that happens, which is something, one of the primary things that uh, tree climbers need to be aware of when they're um, anchoring like this is uh, there is an increase in force exerted on your hind point or your suspension point. Um, and it's up to twice the amount because you have your force, one kilonewton on one side, but Newton's second law, you have to have an equal and opposing uh, force to, to keep you from floating or, or falling. So you have one kilonewton of force or a, you know whatever, how much you weigh on the other side. And then up here, you're gonna have up to twice that because you add these two together. And that's a mechanical advantage. So if, if you know a lot about mechanical advantage, it's you know, pretty easy to get. But if you don't, there can be huge problems uh, because you know, this branch might not be an eight inch cottonwood branch. It could be a, you know, a wrist size 
aspen branch or something, and if you're trying to ascend that tree, and you have that basal anchor, there's a good chance that, you know, two kilometers, which is approximately 440 pounds, could break that, and that's a lot. Um, that eight inch cottonwood limb, not too much of an issue, and you know, that's, that's more of an issue of how comfortable you are as a climber and how well you know the trees you're climbing in. Um, but uh, it's, it's still doable, but you just have to be aware of that force multiplication. One of the ways to get around that is to redirect your line or capture multiple branches, uh, which you can do with the basal anchor or canopy anchor after you're already in the tree with the canopy anchor. And all that does is you have the same force on both legs of your rope, so uh, you're hanging off of one side and the opposing side is, you know, got the, and so you still have twice your force in the canopy, but your forces are redirected um, with, you know, through these angles. And uh, you can change the force from pulling straight down on limbs to going down the compression of limbs or tension. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't know this, uh, if you ever tried to crush a tree branch, it's easy to break, right, over your leg. You ever tried to crush one? You don't need to, it's, you already know it's impossible. So that's what you're doing here is, instead of bending limbs with uh, your body weight, you're, you're kind of more pushing them, less bending them, which uh, inherently makes your system stronger, just by using the physics of the tree. Um, and so, yeah, you can, and so now you have so many options, you can't put your traditional moving rope system out here on the, uh, you know, out here on the end of a branch and like do stuff because you might break that branch, but if you were to <clears throat> thread that line through that branch to something else, you change where your force is, is uh, working on the tree and then now you can access that part of the canopy that way. Uh, and I got some photos of that too, to show you. All right, so we've done just about everything you can with how to set up these systems. Are there any questions? On, I know I've kind of rushed through this. We had a rough time. <laughs> on how to set up um, stationary rope systems, either from the canopy or from the the base of the tree. Okay. Now we get to talk about how we're going to get up in the tree to begin with. <laughs> so if you don't know, um, or if, if you if you climb the tree with the traditional system, you know your options are hip thrust. Um, put on a foot ascender and you know push through 100 feet of rope to get up 50 feet. Uh, but with the stationary rope systems, um, every time you move up the rope, every foot of rope that you pass, you gain a foot of 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 motion, right? So you're not pulling all this rope out just to gain half half of that distance. Your your motions are uh, translated straight through one to one. So um, every foot I move up the rope, I get a foot of altitude. So uh, in order to do that, because I can do about one pull up at a time, is <laughs> you have to add gear. So you got foot ascenders in the ascenders. Um, foot ascender that, you know, there's probably 20 different kinds on the market. Um, you can make your own too. Uh, the, the notch jet stuff is the one I'm currently using. I've been using it for years. It's, in my opinion, by far the best one on the market. Um, it was something else at one point, not rebranded it, but it's still just still good. And then uh, that's for one foot. Like I said, I can only do about one pull up at a time. So, um, you know, instead of using these, this is from, these arms are from pole sawing. They're not from mine. They're from pole sawing. <laughs> but then, you know, on your other foot, you got your knee ascender or your, uh, you know, where it sits at about the level of your knee. It doesn't attach to you. But now all of a sudden you're using your legs to do the propulsion or to propel yourself into the tree instead of your arms. So now uh, we totally changed how our climbing rope is in the tree. Now we're going to totally change what muscles we're moving to get up and down this rope. Um, which is like, now we got another benefit of moving rope systems is we get to use bigger muscle groups to do the to do the work. Um, 